As a long-term buy and hold investor, I'm always looking to add great cash flowing deals to my portfolio. And today I walk you through a deal that I just signed, which is called a land contract, sometimes also referred to as a contract for deed, where you as the investor acquire notes on a property. And as you'll see, there are some great benefits to these deals, but there's also some common pitfalls to avoid. So listen up because I'll discuss all of the pros and cons to owning a land contract. Hey, house stackers, welcome to episode 16 of the Stacking Houses podcast, where we help working professionals create that solid plan B, a side hustle of passive streams of income through real estate investing. I'm your host, Damon Santa Maria, and my goal for each show is to provide you with some practical and inspiring information so that you too can create a solid financial plan for yourself. So to help you on your journey, I want to help those of you that may need some one-on-one -on -one coaching, perhaps help you either get started in real estate, or maybe you have a deal that you'd like to review. You can schedule a conversation with me simply by going to stackinghouses.com forward slash consulting. And while you're there, check out our free training on where Jim and I are finding great deals like the one we're going to review in today's landscape. So as I mentioned in the intro, I want to walk you through a land contract deal that I just signed in Michigan. With these deals, I become the bank for a borrower who has already signed a contract with set terms. This agreement was actually signed back in November of 2019, and they've been making monthly payments for the last two years. And because I can see their payment history, and I can see that they've been on time each month, the notes are considered to be in air quotes, seasoned. Why is this important? Well, because borrowers who have paid on time in the past are likely to continue making their payments in the future. Now, there's no guarantee of this, but I'm protected because I hold the deed to the property. And we'll discuss this a little bit more in a moment, but first, let's take a look at the numbers. So the original contract price that the borrower agreed to was $49,900. They put a down payment of $3,000 at closing, and they agreed to an amortization term of 20 years at 9% interest. So this works out to be $422 a month for principal and interest, which goes directly into my pocket as positive cash flow. Additionally, they will escrow $228 for taxes and insurance, for a grand total of $650 a month. And as a note holder, you always want to include the taxes and insurance in the total monthly amount so that you're protected if the borrower doesn't make the payment. I can also adjust the monthly payment if the taxes and insurance go up over time, which is almost certain to happen. Another piece that I'll mention is that the interest rate goes up to 11% after a five-year initial term so that there is incentive to pay off the loan. And if they don't, I actually make a better return after five years, being that it, it jumps up two percentage points. Currently, there is an unpaid balance of $45,000 on this note. However, I actually bought this land contract for $38,275, which is a discount of 15%. So in a market where single family homes are being bid up by investors, owner occupants, and then Wall Street firms like Zillow and Open Door, I just acquired a great investment under the radar for 85 cents on the dollar while making 9% on my money. So the way I look at it is that I will acquire $5,064 a year in cash flow at a cost of roughly $38,000. So that in seven and a half years, I will have recouped all my money back, which isn't a bad deal. Another interesting part of investing in land contracts is that the owner is responsible for any types of maintenance and improvements. So I don't deal with termites and toilets. So all of this sounds great. 
But wait, there's more. So many of you are asking, why would anyone pay 9% when you can get a mortgage rate at 3% interest? And it's a great question. And the answer is that the borrower must first qualify for a bank mortgage in order to get that 3% interest rate. And fortunately or unfortunately, not everyone who wants to be a homeowner can actually qualify. And therefore, a secondary market has been created where private lenders, such as myself, can loan money out to folks that may not have the best credit scores. Perhaps they have a bankruptcy in their past. Maybe they've taken on too much unsecured debt that couldn't be paid off. Maybe they even co-signed for someone else that ended up screwing up their credit. There's a wide variety of reasons why someone can't qualify for traditional bank financing. However, these folks also don't want to be renters anymore. They're trying to clean up their credit responsibly, and one way to do this is through a land contract. So the next question you probably have is, isn't this risky for the investor? And the answer is maybe. You see, many times your rate of return is directly proportionate to the amount of risk that's taken. That's why you see junk bonds at exceptionally high rates, because they're junk. I was looking at at and stock the other day, and they pay a dividend over 8%. And then I looked at the stock's performance over the last six months, and it was down over 22%. So you have to calculate the risk reward in all of your deals. But with land contract notes, the investor has much more protection because you hold the deed until the last payment is made. And in the event that the owner has stopped making payments, you have the legal right to get what's called a forfeiture and take the property back. Now I've had to do this a few times, and the first time was admittedly a bit scary since I was new to the process and uh, didn't have attorneys in, in place. But when it was all said and done, I ended up getting the property back and got an extra 28000 on one and another 35000 on the other, all because the buyer walked away from the deal and there was so much equity sitting in the property. This was in addition to the 9% interest that they had been paying for years and years. I have other contracts where the buyers have been extremely responsible and have made every payment on time. They even have me send a mortgage interest statement at tax time so they can write off the interest that they pay. The other piece that you as the investor needs to be aware of is that you don't receive all of the tax-favored benefits that you would normally get by directly owning the property itself. This includes mainly the depreciation and the appreciation over time, unless, of course, you get the property back, as I just described before. Land contracts are mostly a cash-on-cash -cash return play, and so they're great for IRA investments. I do own a few land contracts outside of my IRA as a balance to my traditional rental portfolio as well. So I hope this has been helpful because it's a part of real estate investing that few people are even aware of. Personally, I love these types of deals as part of a diversified portfolio. So I hope this has been helpful. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I want to provide you with incredible value. So if you need some one-on-one -on -one coaching, I'm happy to assist. You can simply go to stackinghouses.com forward slash consulting and book a 30-minute session with either me or my business partner, Jim Garvin. And until next time, Happy investing to you, my friends.